the most employable skill that you will gain from your psychology degree is coding. Hey guys, my name is Oli. I run a channel called Psych Oli and I make psychology and volleyball related content here in the UK. I'm going to be talking about what's it like studying psychology here in the UK in 2022. In data collected in 2018 by UCAS, they found that over 121,000 applicants were for psychology courses. And in further research by BPS, they found that a quarter of a million people in the UK are working within a sector revolving around psychology. So that is a lot of people. And you might be wondering why are so many people applying for psychology and working within psychology sectors here in the UK? Well, with the recent surges of mental health awareness, there is a greater need for therapy and counseling and help. So a lot of people are going into it to become a counselor or a therapist. I personally am going into it because I want it to be I want to be a clinical psychologist. For other people, they may be interested more in having a more professional understanding of human behavior at the individual level or at the group level. And for some people, I've met a few of these people as well. They chose psychology because they didn't really know what else to choose. They kind of did okay with it. Or maybe they did excellent in it and they enjoyed it in high school, so they chose it now. So whatever the reason, I hope this video can be helpful for you. To reiterate, I am studying a degree psychology with clinical approaches or CHC8. These are the abbreviations that I've come to learn that the UK uses a lot for a lot of their courses. That's the specific course that I'm taking here in the UK. So I'm gonna pop a screenshot here and I'm putting the link of that down in the description below. And essentially what that is, I also put one for uh, King's College London. And essentially what it is, is an overview of the entry requirements, modules that they teach, teaching ratios in terms of what, what's the ratio of how much time you will spend uh, on lectures and seminars and research versus time spent on self-directed studies. I highly recommend if you go into a psychology course or any course, just to have a look at this. I know a lot of people will look at the entry requirements and they kind of skip over the modules that they will learn or the teaching ratio, I think it's really important to look at that as well. And I'll get into teaching ratios um, specifically here at Sussex, but in general, what to expect from psychology degrees as well. So now I'm going to talk a bit about how teaching occurs within a psychology degree. So I have four modules per semester and you have typically two semesters per year, each semester lasting 12 weeks. Within my specific degree here at Sussex, and this might change depending on the degree you have, but for psychology, uh, you usually have three core modules uh, for your general psychology degree, and then you can choose an elective or a minor. The minor is the end with clinical approaches that I have the, at the end of my degree. And so all my electives are already chosen out for me in my first and second year. But for you, you can decide that yourself if you're ch taking a general psychology degree. And you can be very broad about this. I know this because one of my roommates is taking psychology with uh, an elective in sign language. Another area worth discussing are assessments. So I'm gonna be specifically discussing it from my perspective here at Sussex, but you can expect this from your general psychology degrees as well. Assessments will look like essays, takeaway papers, quizzes, and exams. Quizzes, I have weekly ones uh, here at Sussex, uh, and the quizzes and exams, you can expect them to be multiple choice questions. For the essays, you can have research question based. So for example, you're given three research questions and you have to choose one to write an essay about. Typically, there are 1,500 words uh, around that range and it's based on the lecture contents and the essential readings. Another type of essay is lab reports, self-explanatory, but they can be evaluating lab reports or writing up your own. Takeaway papers are similar to lab reports, but they're specific to my data analysis module. So what does teaching look like? I think this page from KCL, and I've linked it in the description below, uh, sums it up pretty well. Essentially, a lot of psychology is gonna be self-directed study. A small proportion of it is gonna be lectures, seminars, and research practice. Research practice is gonna up in amount of learning in your second and third year to accommodate for your research dissertation, of course. It's important to note that you're going to psychology. You're gonna to have to be okay with spending a lot of the time reading and studying, mostly on your own. Psychology degrees are ubiquitous with being general, and that's the beauty of them because then you can explore in your own time what it is that you enjoy. However, the downside is you have to explore this in your own time and you have to choose something specialized because that's really making the most out of your psychology degree. And I recommend a channel called the Oxford Psych 
and run by this clinical psychologist. Her name is Aika. She's been super useful in helping me uh, set realistic expectations for myself going into clinical psychology. More importantly, these were her words coming from someone who's completed the entire journey, become, became a clinical psychologist. And she says the same. In general, psychology degrees kind of fall off because they're so general and you need to specialize in something or else you're not making the most out of it. So I highly recommend checking her out, specifically if you're looking to study clinical psychology in the UK. But she also offers some great psychology related content as well. One important thing to mention is that teaching is a bit different by your third year. In autumn and spring teaching, you can find yourself taking a research dissertation. And what this is, is an empirical project that consolidates all your research skills that you've taken from your first and second year into creating, uh, analyzing and writing up of a research report that you can choose to publish in a scientific journal by the end of your studies, which I think is pretty cool. Also in your third year, you will have a lot of optional modules to choose from. So this is where you can start to really hone in on what specifically did you like from your first and second year, and you can choose what specifically you want to learn. And this can be really fun because now you can begin to specialize and only really learn the content that you want. Things like forensic psychology, cognitive neuroscience, intelligence in animals and machines, psychology of appetite, manipulating minds. That's a real one. I'm putting that up on the screen. And that's regarding hypnosis. I might make a future video about hypnosis actually, because it's quite interesting. It's one of the lectures I have in one of my modules of social psychology. With that said, there's bound to be something for you. However, you should make the most out of your first and second year to kind of really read around what specifically you enjoyed. Use it kind of as a litmus test for what you would choose in your third year. By the end of your three years, the most employable skill that you will gain from your psychology degree is coding. You heard me right, and you probably weren't expecting to hear this, but you will be learning coding, data analysis, research methods, techniques, stat theory, and you have a dedicated module that will follow you from first, second, and third year until the write-up of your research dissertation. And this makes sense because you're going to have to conduct your own research and data analysis. And you might say, why can't I just use Excel? I asked that question as well. And it's because it's just not as efficient as using R. And knowing how to code is a hugely employable skill nowadays and you shouldn't underestimate it. You should try to keep an open mind about it because it, it will be tough. I didn't learn coding until I started my degree here at Sussex. So I try to be very open minded about it. I didn't like it at many times, but in my second semester, I've started to enjoy it more. And this is just a cruel reality with psychology degrees. You're gonna have to learn coding. And in Sussex, it might be different for other universities, but at Sussex, we're learning R, the programming language, and using the programming software, R Studios. And I will say this, Sussex has done an exceptional job in assimilating me to coding and data analysis stat theory because if they hadn't been as useful as they were or helpful or friendly it would have been really hard for me to actually begin learning coding and know that that's what i had to do for the next three years just something to keep in mind if you're going to a psychology degree Finally, I wanted to close with this. Make sure that if you're taking a psychology course here in the UK, that it is a BPS accredited degree. And this means it's officially recognized by the British Psychological Society as a course of excellent quality in terms of education and training. This is important because, well, firstly, it makes you more employable by the end of your three years or four years. But more specifically, if you're going into clinical psychology or you're wanting postgraduate study or a special Specialization. This is where it gets really useful because a BPS accredited psychology undergraduate degree makes you eligible for a graduate basis for chartered membership or a GBC. And what a GBC is, is you've studied sufficient psychological theory and research to become a chartered psychologist in your chosen field. So this might sound complicated, so I'll give you an example. Let's say you want to become an educational psychologist. So what would this path look like? Well, firstly, you have your bachelor's of science in psychology or, or master's of science with conversion. So if you decide that you took a master's of science and you want to convert, then you have one year of conversion. And then you can also have, by the end of it, a BPS accredited psychology degree. And afterwards, this makes you eligible for a GVC. And this paves the way really for you to become accepted for a possible doctorate in educational psychology. And by the end of your doctorate, you'd be eligible to register for a chartered membership of BPS and authorized to use the title as chartered psychologist. And chartered psychologist is a legally recognized qualification that reflects the highest standards of expertise and knowledge within a chosen field. 
I think that's enough for me. Do go back to sec any sections you felt unsure about or write in the comments any questions you might have for me. I'll try to look at them or any video suggestions you might have for me. I'd love to read those. If you did enjoy this video, please do consider subscribing or leaving a like if you do want to follow me for more UK psychology related or some Bolivar related content. See ya.